Here we are, just north of La Paz. We're on a little peninsula. It's called El Mahote. And the boats that you see are tours giving passengers a ride out to the whale sharks. The whale sharks are in this area just up and down where we've picked as a campground. There are condos down there and there's a security guard that rides up and down the beach on a four-wheeler and he, we've met him and he said that it was cool for us to camp here as long as we want. He sees us as another pair of eyes on the beach. So he waves to us and uh, it's going really well. A lot of people exercising are out here and uh, they'll come walking up and down the beach. Some of them are running early in the morning, sometimes late. Every once in a while we'll get somebody on a vehicle that comes ripping through here and they usually just go down, turn around and come back, which I take that as you really don't want to put your beach chair out on the hard sand or do too much as far as setting equipment up out on the beach because these guys really come flying and they're probably not expecting to see anything because this is a secluded beach. So this is where we are so far. We've got uh, internet now and what we got for internet was a Telso card. It looks like this. It's a little USB module. That's what the box looks like when you walk in the store. This is what the module looks like. It just plugs in and it costs 500, a little over 500 pesos, which I'm gonna guess is somewhere around 35 bucks. It comes with a gig of uh, data on it when you buy it. And then you can just renew your data. I've gone and renewed it once just to pad it a little bit. And it was 300 pesos for one gig. So I figure 100 pesos is a little over five bucks. So you're talking about 15, 18 bucks for one gig. So we're trying to use the internet connection very sparingly and go into places in town where there might be a Wi-Fi that we could uh, get onto, which I haven't found really good ones yet. I found one in Band at Bandidos. Uh, it cost me 10 bucks because I bought three beers and tipped the guy. So there's always gonna be a cost associated in some way. We're trying to keep that down. Some other things to note is that uh, American dollars are, are uh, accepted everywhere here so far. In fact, if we uh, make a purchase at some place with a register, the, the register will display the total in pesos and American dollars. Usually what happens is I'll pay for it in American dollars and get pesos as change. I did go to an exchange uh, booth in La Paz and switch out a hundred bucks for pesos. It was maybe 1,750 pesos, something like that. Not, not as good as it would have been at the border, but still. I got them. I was reminded by a guy named Jim that we met that uh, a couple years ago was 15 pesos, so I'm not sweating 1750. Another thing that I learned is we came down here with our Garmin and it didn't have any any Mexican maps on it. So, I went to openstreetmap.org and downloaded a couple of Baja maps and now my Garmin does show where we are at all times and it's also a searchable map. I downloaded some maps of Utah for topography over the summer and they weren't searchable maps so they're now more sophisticated so I can punch stuff in. I can punch a tell cell in or you know whatever services I'm looking for and it comes up on the map so I would recommend that if you use a uh, GPS coming down here. I also learned that almost everything that the locals eat down here they either grow it as vegetables or they raise it such as chickens or eggs or they fish for it you know and they catch it out of the ocean. There isn't that much here that locals for instance in Mulahe buy from the store unless it's beer and soda maybe some spices or mayonnaise or something but you know, these people grow their own food which means you know they're probably in better shape than we are if anything were to happen and they're also eating pretty well. Everybody seems friendly and like a, a community. We stayed in Playa Santa Spec just south of Mulahe for a hundred pesos a day which is about maybe just say six bucks a day. We did it for three days. It was a nice beach. Everybody there was really friendly but we're not used to paying to camp so we moved on down and now we're not paying to camp where we are now. Water down here. Up north we get water in reverse osmosis dispensers and fill up our jugs that way. Here 
they just come in the five gallon clear jugs like you would have at a water cooler. And so we just buy those and fill our jugs with them and then walk them back out and put them back in the, uh, in the racks at the store. I think we're paying somewhere around 25 pesos. Maybe it's like $2 for five gallons of uh, clean water. We are filling up our solar shower with water at the gas station. That's not uh, drinking water, but it's safe to take a shower in. All right, so that's an update from down here in Mexico and on to some of the sights and sounds of the things that we've done so far since our last upload. We'll see you guys soon. Where is this? Um, Puertecitos? Yes. Probably Mulehe. Yeah. Sir. Before we came down here, there was talk that this road had been graded. I don't know what it was like before, but I would say that it has not been graded. You can see the steering wheel. Okay. This is Coco's Corner. I read about this place after our friend Ben told us about it. This is a true Mexican that's lived here his whole life, and he is reaching 80, or he might be past 80 if he's still alive, and he has lost both of his legs due to diabetes. So he is uh, roaming on a four-wheeler around here somewhere. And there's the sign, Coco's Corner. I can't describe the smell right now. We just passed a, uh, a camp of uh, heavy road equipment. And now we're starting to go up a hill. And as we're going up this hill, the road does seem like it's been graded. So hopefully it's been graded from here on in. That would be awesome. That's it, that's all the rough road? I guess so. Maybe there's more of it. Maybe. Once you pass over, I think. Look at that. What is that? Uh, it's like a Mexican source. That's a whale. Oh. You, uh, where the whales are? Sí. Where? Yeah. Dos kilómetros a mano derecha, office. Ahí está la. Look, Kendall's driving. Wow, y'all uh, very rarely ever see this. <laughs> Last time she drove was. Uh, like a year ago. <laughs> yeah, a long time ago. Pedro Zalia. People driving in dark. This guy's out painting. This is probably his second job of the day. Day two, waking up in Mexico. So it's really beautiful, and I can't wait to actually be on the beach when we wake up and um, get going and doing our stuff. I think it means that if we don't go through this arch, we didn't do it. So there's an agua purificado. All right, so we got a place to get water. Look, yep. there's a Pemex. We can fuel. Yeah. Hola. Hola.
though. Yeah, it's really pretty over Beautiful here. Beautiful blue water. Huff it, huff it, huff it. Bienvenidos, welcome to RV Park. Vengo de Espacios. Palapa. Palapa, 50 pesos for Palapa. 50 pesos, so, but overnight is 100 pesos? 100 pesos for, for camping. Si. Sí. Si, sí, ok. Ok, gracias. Ok, thank Humber you. Humberto? Humberto. Humberto. Gracias. Thank you. Ok, I'm gonna turn around. We'll be back. Ok. okay. Gracias. See you in a little bit. See you later. Cool, thanks. And so this is the place for 100 pesos a night with no palapa. Palapas are what do you say, 50 pesos? You said 50 pesos for a palapa, but I think that's just for the date. Right. We're here in Mulahe. We're just south of Mulahe at an area called, what is it? Playa Santispec. Santispec. Playa Santispec. And we've been here for three days. We paid 100 uh, pesos per day to Amberto, a fine, young, handsome gentleman that uh, gives us a little ticket he fills out when we give him 100 pesos, and that's good for chilling right here on the beach for 24 hours and so we stayed here for three days we watched the Super Bowl at uh, the restaurant and then we watched the well the first half of it and then the second half we watched at John's uh, fifth wheel and I don't think it's in the shot it's probably 150 yards from here and yesterday Kendall went out on a boat ride with John and went to these islands what would you like to say about that? It was awesome. He says that there's Stand here seven so the islands. Sun in your face. He says that there's so there's seven islands around here. We went to six of them. We saw blue-footed boobies. They're like birds that look kind of like seagulls that actually have like turquoise feet. And we saw sea lions and we saw skates or those manta rays flipping and flying out of the water. And it was just a really fun day. I got to see all these other little beaches that you can't see from the highway. And we went around, I mean, we were gone for probably three hours in his little boat. And it was so much fun. I'm, I'm really glad that he invited me to go out there. So I got to see the whole area of the Bay of Conception. So it was awesome. I, on the other hand, went for a dirt bike ride with Al and Tom. Tom lives at the next little community over. And Al lives in Mulahe. And we went 50 miles into the center of Baja. And we went into a box canyon. I've got some footage of that. I haven't looked at it yet. So hopefully it's good stuff that I'll be posting. It was a fun ride. And our ride was probably about five or six hours. So I came back uh, in the evening. It was a great day. Uh, amazing vistas. We saw, you know, how people live out in the middle of nowhere. And so hopefully that translates on the video. Now we're packing up. So three days into Mulahe, we got the Super Bowl under our belt, which we probably could have seen at a lot of places, but I wanted to make sure we'd get to see it. The Broncos won, we're Broncos fans. I had my Broncos jersey on uh, at the restaurant, so that was cool. The only drawback was uh, that there, it wasn't a crowded event. There were somebody, people at a different restaurant that were crowded and they were mostly Panther fans. So it would have been fun to be there, but hey, it was a good time. Now we're going to pack up the van and head to, we're going to La Paz. I don't think we're gonna get there today. We've got a lot of traversing across to do and we don't know what the roads are gonna be like, but here's what the van looks like right now. We're just packing it up and in a minute I'll throw the motorcycle on the back and we will hit the road further south. Excited, good stuff, see ya.